Welcome to the Wednesday, October 18th, 2017 Select Board, Board of Health meeting here in the municipal, Deerfield Municipal offices. First, um, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone well, the recording has to be first. Oh, yes. we announced this meeting is being recorded, just in case there was a question in anybody's mind. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, so we have minutes uh, October 4th. There was a couple corrections <coughs> key, um, and it was my fault. Um, that I, it was I you had correctly documented it, but it was misinformation on our part. The state reclamation board met today, not Friday. So if you if we could correct that mm -hmm. and just add a little um, last year comment on Kip's uh, budget uh, discussion. And did you have another one? Yeah, I lost my spot. <laughs> okay. Um. Where was the other one? Um, the budget. On the 5% budget, it oh, had to do with right. last, last year's, year's or right? this year's yeah. budget, last actually. Year's. Yeah. We're going to just write through. You mean this year's? Last year. Last year. It was about yeah. last year's cycle, but That's this year's budget. Yes, you're right. Yeah, no, it was for last year. Okay, and good. Then, um, Kip, did you have another one? Yeah, I just read it. Not more. It disappeared, too. We've had such incredible notes here that, and minutes that. It may take a while to go through. Yeah. Well, we could approve them um, subject to amend a revision. changes. Yes. What page? The, this changes that we're talking about. So I, I make a motion to approve the minutes of October 4th, 2017, with said corrections. Um, I'll second that. Is it about the 61A property yeah. and the sewer yeah. thing? Yeah. It, it just. I, it, I agree. I didn't. I didn't intend that that parcel of land could be used for the sewer expansion. It could be used as, as an example swap. of a, a swap. Yes. yes. Yep. Absolutely. Gotcha. Um, so we'll so if somebody reads this after the fact, they might say, well, why would they want to put the sewer, sewer expansion on River Road? Know. Correct. That's not what it was. Okay. Yeah. So um, we'll make those changes. So can't all, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you'll locate it. I will. Mm -hmm. um, select board comments, Trevor. Did you have so, anything? So yeah, can't? I would like to just comment on on the. Um, so Friday went up to the uh, FERCOG for their twentieth um, anniversary, which was really great to talk to legislators, and they had a, a wonderful um, all these different vignettes around where you could you know learn some CPR. We had some great. Um, Great people teaching CPR up there. They had all kinds of other. Um, Lisa White was up there doing doing some, I think, some flu shots and some other stuff. And then um, the uh, the other thing Friday night was busy. So we had a um, Tilton Library had a great function over there it was, Friday night. It was, it was really good to see everybody, and it was one of their last celebrations for uh, celebrating the hundred year anniversary of the Tilton Library. So they had plans on board, some cheese and wine, and good company, and a nice quilt uh, raffle to, uh, to Rini, which was great. And, um, and then we set up Friday night for the flu clinic, which was Saturday, uh, which worked out wonderful. Uh, we serviced uh, a vaccination to 170 70 people, which and included 50 kids, which is 40 more people than last year. So it was a really good success, good layout. And, um, so, and, yeah. uh, um, Very nice. and thank you for your input on this, on trying to update the plan with the new traffic yeah, site. Yeah, the traffic Sur circle. Yeah, I, I, I did sketch it out, but I, I just haven't had a chance to yeah. well, do we'll it officially. But um, I'll have it for the November 6th November 6, uh, right? drill. Yes. Great. So, um, but thank you so much, Trevor, because yeah, no, you great. were, you were really participatory. Um, mm. I also want to just, um, Trooper um, Baker in town yes. got an award and huge. a um, huge Award and I, I think that's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, the top, it's the top award for. A, I know for, for a police. police officer. Yeah, and so that was very nice. State, state, state trooper. State trooper. State trooper. Yep. yep. Um, Kip, did you have anything? Um, no, not at okay. this time. 
Um, Board of Health comment, I just want to say the State Reclamation Board met today and they certified the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District. So we're off and running. I'm pretty excited about that. And um, hopefully we'll get the majority of the 46 towns. And yeah, see how, how the hard work begins. Yeah, yeah, now we have to organize. Um, so thank you. Um, town Administrator's Report. Oh. Um, it's not quite 6 .15. Okay. Is that clock in here? All right. So just update. I, I was noticing that a number of things that I talked about at your last meeting, I have updates on. Um, unless you have something to add, Kevin, we're still getting um, um, seeking responses from plowers to do the plowing in town. Um, those are due on the 30th. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, the 30th? Yes. And um, um, I will have at your next meeting uh, the contract for the company um, for the fence, finishing the fence project on Sugar Loaf Street, Com Sugar Loaf Street Cemetery. Um, it is pro likely to be Fitzgerald Fence again. They were received two bids, and the other one was astronomical, way beyond, and hmm. this was under our, our amount that we had available. Um, and it was some good good news with that. We thought we were going to have to do the, hi the highway public works was going to have to do bunch of digging up of concrete and stuff and it looks like we may not have to do that but so that's mm -hmm. that's good um, to make the fence work right um, personnel board was supposed to meet but there was a glitch with the posting um, so they are going to be meeting next Monday and oh, looking okay. continuing to look at uh, the compensation plan personnel policies um, and the uh, evaluation program for employees um, I sent you all the, uh, the uh, uh, invitation from Congressman McGovern about the beer tour on the 27th, yeah. um, and um, they're going to be over at Berkshire Brewery, what it was, 11 o'clock, I think? Yes. 11.30, yes. yeah. but they're going around his district. There's, what, six or seven different companies. Yep. So, um, and I don't know, I, I wrote back to you, but I didn't hear back from you about the training that you asked me about. I did. I, I did. Uh, okay. But I didn't hear. Okay, you got it. Got <laughs> right. it. If you want to talk about it, I'd be happy to talk about it. No, I, I was satisfied. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I really don't want to go. <laughs> but, um, I have something in your folder. I, I think I've mentioned to some of you, and I'll schedule this for the next meeting. Um, Delta Sand and Gravel, I guess mm -hmm. formerly Warner Brothers, has a tower near Towns Tower, and they know they need to be moving it. It's right on the edge of the cliff, and um, there's a letter in there. Um, they're going to. They are looking at possibly buying about 6,000 square feet of land from the town. Um, so look at the letter and think about it, and we can talk I, with them um, next week and all that. Yeah, I, I, I was just wondering um, if there was a way we could do um, an RFP um, and have them take land. Or we could give them land, and our, then we could get the sidewalk like on Elm Street I'm going to have repaired. to look into this more, but I think our options really are either to lease or sell the property, sell the land that they need. So, so we can't do like a... I, think I mean, we'd be land selling swap, it. But I don't think you can barter. That's, I think, what you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, well, <laughs> I... I, would, I don't know. <laughs> well, it just seems like we, I mean, we really need Elm Street. Well, we have to get a sense of what the value of the property is first. Yes. And to oh, figure absolutely, out what we, absolutely. We, but what I, makes I think sense. Yeah. if it seems like we should write, be able to write an RFP that they could respond to that would allow us to do we, the we land. We don't. If it's the land is valued less than thirty-five thousand, we don't even have to do an RFP. So okay. we can. There's a. a it's only a quarter. An option it to, would be about a quarter of an acre, or less than a quarter right, of an acre. Right, it's one point four two or something, something like that. Right. So, or it's point four two. I have to look. You know, mm -hmm. Okay. See. Yeah. We have to get the value on it. So. All right. Well, but we'll he'll he'll come in and maybe he'll have more. Talk. I asked him to do that. So. I I, I mean I was just um, when I heard it I was like oh my gosh this might be an opportunity to get our sidewalks fixed or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see. That. Yeah. And we do have folks scheduled at 6.15, but I was going to mention that the bylaws committee has met again. And um, well, why don't, we, um, after the, after why don't we meet with talking. Ellen and Bob, and then we can talk about the bylaws. Do you, Bruce, would you be here for a few minutes so we could? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I do really want us to talk about the bylaws. Um, so why don't you come up? The, and, and, and one other thing, um, oh. I just, you know, and I, I will have something more for next week, is special town meeting. 
um, just to talk about that. And also, okay. we did a church tour today. Oh yeah, well, another well, one. So yes. after later in the meeting, yeah. I'll give more of an up. I'll finish. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Hi. Hi. How are you? Um, if you don't mind, just introducing yourselves and um, yeah, have a seat. that for for the and people on that are listening, <laughs> and and then they're just explaining. Um, I know I know why you're here, but it would be nice to explain to people why you're here. Okay, I'm Bob Dash, uh, I'm president of the uh, Commons of Jersey Condo Association, and we're also self-managed. Um, I'm concerned about our deteriorating main entrance road and uh, the uh, cross road at the end. Heritage Way and Adams Court. Mm -hmm. <coughs> They're in pretty bad shape. Also, the uh, catch basins are in the lawn, and the grass and everything is higher than the road, so nothing ever goes down into the catch basins. And we need swales or something, a, a path to get into here. During the winter, there's some pretty nasty ponds at the end of driveways. And when they freeze, there's a potential problem with uh, people falling, especially elderly like we have here. The, the other thing is that uh, the post office boxes, water collects in front of them. You know, I don't know. I think they just the back end of it needs to be elevated or something on the paving so that it runs off. And it's not, you know, in the wintertime is... Uh, the, the most dangerous concern. Right. Also, the drainage uh, swales are, will have to be uh, cleaned out, you know, uh, either shoveled or however, snow blow or something, so that there's a means for the water to run off in the melting snow and so forth. So basically, we want to just have a preliminary discussion about what, when, and where. Okay. Well, um, I did check. Um, those streets are about two-thirds down on our list of roads for um, on our pavement management plan. We um, had gotten a small grant years ago, and we had someone do um, a pavement inventory of the roads in town. And then um, I think we paid the FERCOG not mm -hmm. too long ago. Yeah. Uh, maybe four or five years ago to um, update our pavement management plan. In other words, they went out and re-looked at all our roads and the conditions because some roads deteriorate. If it's insulation, you're talking about swales and, you know, catch basins and stuff. It's the design and how it wears and stuff like that might have a faster, you know, because of installation, <coughs> poor installation or not as good installation as other roads. Um, so they deteriorate faster. So the idea is to have um, a review of your pavement management plan on a regular basis and be alerted to roads that are deteriorating faster. And um, your streets really didn't change that much. So in other words, we get Chapter 90 money from the state, which is our pavement money, and we do the roads. So I would say, um, optimistically, Kevin can... Um, chime in here, but optimistically, you would probably looking at three to five years out before we get to your road. What do they do in the meantime? Uh, we do. Uh, we we spend our chapter ninety money paving um, certain sections in town. You're not going to just put a code on. Uh, well, it depends. It depends on what is needed on your road. Um, it the pavement management plan is indicates where you are um, in deterioration level. Kevin, can you help me out as far as what is necessary some on some roads and some not, and what you've done? Because I know you and Mike went out right away. <coughs> you had got sent an email, and Kevin and Mike had gone out right away, and they did do some work out there a little bit. Um, so maybe you can explain that, Kevin. All right, uh, Kevin Scarborough, Highway Superintendent. Um, back on... Love it. February 28th, 2017, about 10.40 a.m., I received an um, email through the town website uh, requesting me to go ahead and we go ahead and take a look at these uh, substantial repairs needed, repaving the areas broken by the plows, aging wear and tear, 
several areas of pooling from the rainwater, melting snow that need adequate drainage. Um, and then they just talk more about who they are and what they, what they feel their needs are. Um, that was a Tuesday. On Wednesday, uh, myself and Mike Phillips, the foreman, we went out and we took a look at it. Um, we recognized the fact that, you know, there's a few areas in there that needed some pothole fixing. Um, drainage themselves, pretty much what we found for drainage issues was in the, was in the uh, beginning of the driveways. Um, and to be honest with you, what I was just trying to look at just now on my phone, and I'm not being able to get it, is how far back our layout goes. And I do believe, and I could be completely wrong, because they are fairly far back, those catch basins are not within the town layout. So that would be just as if I was to go on somebody else's lawn and start digging their lawn, which, we, you know, obviously we don't work on other people's property. Would it be on the 12 feet, excuse me? Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. That, that's why I would have to look, to be honest with you. Um, Kip and I actually went out and looked at it um, two days ago. Two days ago? Yes. Yeah, Monday. Sorry. <laughs> they were starting to run together. Yeah. Um, Presently, right now, you know, we did go out, we did a little bit of a cutting on the edges. Uh, we did go ahead and take care of the, the second driveway on the left hand side. We did make a small cut so that we went down towards that drain. The drain on the right hand side we felt was too far out of our purview. Um, but he does bring up a good point that a lot of the, the um, soils that are around next to the road are too high. So, in all feasibility, what I should be doing is I should be going back. And I should be cutting those back because water's not supposed to be on our roadway because it deteriorates the roadway, the whole nine yards. Um, I'm not sure how, how far, how deep we want to get into this at this point in time. Um, well, again, think, like, you were, like you were talking, you know, we're, we're, it's fairly down, like you said, it's basically it's, it's the bottom third of the list. Um, you know, we have probably, well, I don't know, I believe there's like a hundred and, 39 instances that they're looking at and they're fairly high up on the list. Um, to be honest with you, you know, it could be done there, maybe some crack sealing and maybe, maybe uh, uh, a seal coat of some kind or something like that. But as far as doing a reclaim there, no. No, that is way far down on the list. Uh, you go to Lee Road, Lee Road needs it much, much more. The traffic that is on there, you're talking everybody that's going back and forth to the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Um, that section of road is, is trash, and that does need to be ground and uh, repaved at that point in time, or a mill and fill is what they call it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, can I just interrupt? Yeah, the please reason, The reason why we had um, a pavement management plan or applied for the grant and did this is because um, it was always done, whoever complained came and complained, got pavement. And there wasn't any rhyme or reason or priorities, and and so that's why we pay, you know, got the grant to pay someone to do an inventory of our pavement. And the idea is to um, do the roads as efficiently and effectively as as possible, and and therefore it's not not political, not you know, it's your road needs it, and the, and you're going to get it this year. And we. Um, and when we get our Chapter 90 money, that's what Kevin, Kevin um, parcels out, however it goes for that year. Yeah. So it, it is on the list. I don't want you to think that we're not aware of it. And as Kevin said, he's been out there. And, um, but um, I, coming to us and, and asking us to override the pavement management plan, I, I, I want to be honest, it's not going to happen. So I, I'm not trying to be mean, but... Um, it, you know, we're sticking to our plan, uh, and I mean, it's a vote of the board. This is just me saying it, but um, uh, the pa pavement management plan, the purpose was not to be political and listen to the, you know, the loudest complaints yeah. and, and address it. We, it. It needs to be done in a priority manner and in the best way possible for the town. Yeah. That's um, long term. You're talking, I, I understand the three mm -hmm. to five year business. Yep. I've been involved with stuff like that for a long time. Anyway, um, uh, is there any put, any way that we can get a 40-scale uh, um, drawing of the streets? Um, there should be. The assessor should have that, right, Wendy? I don't know. Uh, I've been there, and they can't seem to find any. Really? 
What, what is it again you were asking? What, what do you, uh, you, more it, detailed it, drawing the of the way in Adams yeah. Court and you know the layout the, it, of the road. So how how, how it was, it was laid out. Not eight and a half by eleven inch. You can get at the uh, the uh, Reg Reg registry of deeds. Um, you want a, big, a bigger set to look at? Yeah, maybe? we'd yeah, have to. Yeah, but uh, actual I, the, uh, a, a scale drawing, a forty scale drawing. <laughs> Which would they do when they have a definitive plan of a, right. of a development? Probably the best thing to do is to find out who originally did that layout and go to that surveyor. And I did already. It oh, was yeah. just, it was. Uh, uh, they were in here in town for years. Ainsworth, uh, uh, Gordon Ainsworth and Associates. Yeah. Yep. And they are they're presently in Hadley right now. Yep. And uh, they have their archives up in Greenfield. Yep. He did go take a look and see if he could find it. Yep. He could find phase two, which was Meadowwood. Yep. Uh -huh. But he couldn't find any any uh, any uh, drawings. Uh, even if I just had the definitive drawings in the beginning, not the as built. The as built yep. would, would even be better. But was this uh, submitted for to the? I was just going to say work? maybe Dick hmm. has a. That's, that's where I'd go. Do you, Dick do you know, do you know Dick Kalashevsky? Yeah, his office in yeah I, I've talked with Dick many times about it already. And and he couldn't find any plans. No, he couldn't find any uh, of those size plans. No. Hmm. And there should be some uh, for yeah. all, any of the streets in town. Uh, uh, when when were they built? Eighty four ish, somewhere around there. Gosh, that that would have required. It did, but there's a lot of stuff missing in town hall. Somebody must have some because occasionally on our Title V work and so forth, I see a lot, uh, Sean Kimberly, the engineer who does a lot of our work for us, is, is uh, taking, you know, picking up off of, off of an existing drawing somewhere. Well, somebody's got some someplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does she have any? Hmm? You, you said that this Kimberly. Sean. She has. He's the engineer that does the title. Right, the Title V stuff. Did you ask him if, where he gets it from? Um, I think I did, but I forgot what he had said. This was quite a while ago. Yeah. But, and you, also, you could get that from the Registry of Deeds. I don't think, I, the, the, the bottom line was he didn't have anything. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And what, the Registry, what do they just have, like an eight, eight and a half by 11 yes. or something like that? And well, you'd you can, have to yeah. blow you it take, up. Or? You can take that and go to a, a firm that does that, and they can blow it up for you. Well, Registry of Deeds were kind enough to give me a full size, you know, a drawing equivalent to a 40 scale. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, I can use that and mark it up, you know, my, myself. Right. Where I think that the, uh, maybe some preliminary work can get done. Gotcha. And the preliminary work that I'm talking about would be the swales and the things that go down to things, at least as far down. It was, Within the 12 feet, I mean, that's a 50 foot way. Mm -hmm. There's um, only 25 feet of paved road there. But there so there's 12 feet on each side. Who, who was the engineer on that? Do you know? I have I no mean, idea. Do you know who the engineer was that designed it? But, uh, specifically? Yeah. No, but. Because uh, the engineering Ainsworth. firm yeah, would have had. Because they just said Ainsworth. Or, like but that's a surveyor, isn't it? Or is that yeah, the. No, they did it. Um, the, oh, did they uh, engineer uh, it? Cocott built it. He was, he was one of. They're the ones who physically constructed the road. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, I know. It was called C.T. Mail. Hmm? Um, C.T. Mail. Yeah. C.T. Mayor? Mail. 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 That was the name of the outfit. Well, that was the engineering outfit? They were here in town. Yeah. That was the after. After right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what would you, so what you're, are you asking Kevin um, you're asking Kevin to... Well, um, number one, I just want to know where we stand, and that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. right oh, now. okay. Well, yeah. and like I said, I checked so you know s sort of where you are in the pavement management that plan. That part of it we can live with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, what I'm saying is, in the meantime, if we could do anything, I, I know it's... Um, the swells would have nothing to do with surfacing the road or anything like that. They would be an addition... Or you know, coming off the road towards those right. uh, catch basins. Those are dry wells anyway. There, there's yeah. not a, there's no pipes, exit pipes. It's just a dry well. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, but if we can get it so the water would run off into these 
even with a heavy rainstorm. Uh, one, one, on, on the building that I'm in, uh, building five atoms and three atoms, a driveway in between. At the bottom of that is, the rain comes down there, is a six inch deep small pond. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, there, and within 30 feet, there's a catch basin. Oh. So, that is really frustrating. Is it just because the uh, material built up over the years, or just maybe no? It it's just right that it, uh, well, that one in particular is a little bit different. It's the driveway. The end of the driveway comes down to approximately where the road roadway starts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then in the this, that short short section of driveway from there to the that 12 feet or so is where the hollow is. Mm. And well, that, the only way you could get that to drain off would be have it have a swale come off of that, uh, you know, at the end of the driveway, yeah, come off yeah. of that and go towards the, uh, the driveway. Uh, be towards the south, which is uh, uh, south of the driveway. The only hang up there is there's a transformer there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, they just recently cut across the street there on, a while back anyway for uh, wires. Okay. And uh, but. Uh, your, your association could, if you wanted to, you could dig up your driveways and create a swale beforehand because we have a bylaw that the driveways aren't supposed to put displaced water onto the road, and that's kind of what you're describing, and that, that's what I saw. I'm sorry, I didn't hear all of what you said. I said that the drive, I'm going to exaggerate this, but the driveways go like this onto the roadway, and the road's crowned a little bit, and this is where that water's gathering. Your association could dig out the driveway and create a swale on your on your property, and divert the water to the catch basins. In this particular case, it would be about 12 feet up from the paved road, which would uh, be too high onto the driveway. It's well, that's what I'm saying. Right from the get-go, when I looked, uh, the ones that I know is all of the driveways pitch down toward the road, so that's why the water doesn't go toward the catch basins. Yeah. So it was the installation. It's also coming down from design from the uh, southern, I mean, uh, northern northern side of the driveway. It's running down the road right. and, and going into it. It's not right. coming off the driveway. Right. Coming down. But it, it's still it's it's it, the the issue is that the grass. I'm not sure. Over the years, maybe just cutting the grass, it builds up and builds up. That now you, know, you got the road here, you got the grass here, and you get the catch basin That's down exactly here. That's exactly right. Oh. It's, it's somewhere in between. Like you were but saying, like it Kevin almost says, needs to be where, cut. Where do you, you know, the, it's, it's a kind of a. Cut the back. Oh, Excuse the, me. The town oh. can't cut the grass down to the catch basin because now we're on private property. It doesn't say all the way down to the catch basin. It doesn't have to go all the way to the catch basin. Catch basin. It's just uh, be like a trough. Yep. Heading towards oh, the catch basin. Just a cut in There's it. Enough, enough of yep. a slope so, there so that okay. if we had to, we could have let snows come in and landscape it with stone or something Yeah. Uh, yep. from there to the catch basin. Right. We, we wouldn't mind doing that. But, but just uh, to get a cut. But cut the coming hole. from the paved road or from the, at least whatever's in the 50-foot way. Mm -hmm. If it's in the 50-foot way, we're not supposed to touch that. Correct. Yeah. That's right. Um, so, so Kevin, if I could, so basically what I did was I was finally able to get on um, the website here, and what I did was I went to the assessor's map online, and I'm looking at the layout right now, and it's not 50 feet from center line. If you're actually no, it's 50 foot total width. Correct. And, but what I'm what I'm trying to get at is, is is as you're going in the north side, it looks like we're only about, and I and I could be wrong here. It only looks like I'm maybe three feet is the layout. Now on the southern side, we, it's more of a layout. And then if you actually go to Adams Court North, the town layout, the circle area right there, again, according to what I'm looking at right here, their parking lot is part of the town's layout. Right. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to, I understand where you're coming from, and, and I would like to help, but I need to be very cautious because I need to abide by this because as soon as I make one decision away from this, now that just takes this, and I might as well just throw it away because then everybody else will be coming in and doing the same exact thing. Um, and you can see why I want some definitive plans. 
-hmm. You know, I, I, just, I can see what you're just from. saying about the entrance coming into Heritage, Heritage Way. The north side of it is skimpy, yep. as, as far as uh, w the way they centered the road on the layout. They didn't center it on the 50 feet. Yeah, it's lopsided. Yeah, sure, big yep. time. Yep. And, and it almost that's looks not like, uncommon. It happens a lot of times in different jobs. And it also looks like that mailbox is actually on your property too, not on my my layout, according to this. I mean the whole side of the whole south north side. Uh, just where I'm, I'm, like I said, what there is is because I went on their their website, and what what this does is their plus or minus is what I'm told within ten inches, and I'm again I'm just going on in a tough because it's on my phone, yeah. um, but the layout looks like. And I could be wrong, but it looks like a majority of those post office things are on their side and not our side. But with that being said, the approach to it is on our side, right. which we could probably do something there. And that's you know, I small repairs. It's already yeah. paved, but it's, yeah. it needs, but it's to need, needs to be needs to be pitched a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, because realistically, what you're seeing here, because if we we collectively as a town have not touched this road since it was made, yeah. then any of the issues that we have now were created when this project was created. Right. Now, with that being said, and, and I'm not trying to throw stones at anybody, but then maybe we shouldn't have accepted it as a town road because it wasn't proper. So, well, and, and, and again, I'm not trying to split hairs, but I have. want to make sure that everybody's well aware of, of all of the issues so it's not just on, on me, per se. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So but That's one of the, that's the criteria of the as-builds. Because mm -hmm. the as-builds is what the state accepts, not the, the uh, original drawings. Correct. The original right. drawings are only what we think we can do. The engineers get out there, they have to make adjustments, they move the roadway over, and you have, have to submit an as-built plan to the state in order to get it accepted as one of the, one of the roads that go on the cherry sheet, whatever they call it. That's correct. Yep. That's correct. Okay. Yep. So I'm quite familiar with that. I designed many telephone jobs that way. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you understand. Um, so it sounds like, Kevin, you're you're gonna work with them what we do a little bit pre presently right now what what I could do because like I said I'm again just going off the layout right here that second driveway on the right hand side which is the first one that we actually stopped at um I can only go like maybe two feet and right. then I'm not on the town layout anymore um so and that drain is 15 feet away roughly somewhere thereabouts about that ballpark yeah. mm -hmm. um but on the southern side right across is where we did actually make a cut in there and, um, and we threw some seed in afterwards to be able to make sure that that section right there would actually go back to that catch basin that's there at that point, which, or a dry well per se. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, I have to, again, I, I can't work on private property. As far as I can go is the town layout and that's as far as I'm going to go. Um, I can go ahead and, and probably go ahead and throw in some patch to be able to try and regrade the area right there by the uh, um, by the mailboxes, mm -hmm. we can probably go ahead and knock that wonderful. out without too much of an issue. Right. Yeah. Um, but as far as the driveways, it, the roadways themselves, um, again, I'm I'm at least three years out. Um, yes. You know, because I, again, we only get so much money. I, per I just year. want to be realistic, I but was, I, I was, but yeah, if right. uh, but if Kevin can fix in front of the mailboxes, that would be huge because then people because yeah. that's a safety. You know that would be reduce some of the safety issues. Well, I get a lot of calls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. she mm -hmm. gets the calls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'm sorry you're not completely satisfied, but do you do you well? Uh, do you one, feel I, okay? I'm not talking about doing anything to disrupt the three to five year plan mm -hmm. for the paving of the road. Mm -hmm. But I want these. I wanted to get at least do whatever we can combine the, what we can do and what they, what mm -hmm. you can do, right? To um, alleviate the issues. Have the runoff yeah. water go into those or towards those catch basins, whether they're plugged up with God knows what. Uh, you know, maybe they won't even drain. Maybe they won't even. Uh, you know, uh, 
go, uh, the water may, won't even dissipate. But the, we won't know that until we get the water to run in there. Yep. I think they should work well. I mean, it's real sandy in that area. Yeah, so, it's, mm, it's, it's excellent. Sandy. It's like playing in a it's sand drainage. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I have to say, Kevin is wonderful. So you you should be able to work with him. Yeah. And but you just have to realize that Kevin is restricted in some ways. And well, if we can get some information snow. about what the definitive, what the pardon me, this, the uh, layout is as built plans. Somebody's got them somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's like gold. Okay. Would that would that be available from the state? Hmm? Would that be available from the state? Could I mean, possibly the state could possibly have it. The land court the, could have it. For the simple fact is, obviously, if they uh, if they approved it as a chapter ninety, then they must have some type of documentation down right. there. Absolutely. So that have. would probably be well, a good place to start. I'm right down pretty sure two. that all of the plans that are submitted go directly to the registry of deeds. Uh, once they they go through the planning board, the planning board signs off. Well, the one that the, the copy that the registry of deeds doesn't show hammerheads on the end of the uh, Adams Court. They show a cul-de-sac. Huh. Huh. And uh, correct. And you know the cul-de-sac goes way into where we pave with stone and oil. Correct. And uh, that there's there's trees and grass planted in that area inside of where, what would be the cul-de-sac mm -hmm. that we sp pay snows to take care of. Mm -hmm. And uh, those, are, those are the kinds of concerns that, you know, that are just an offshoot of what you know, has mm -hmm. something to do. That's why getting a hold of some plans, the, you way know they, really the, way have. the way the thing was constructed and what adjustments were made from the original plans that Upton presented, mm -hmm. you know, so. Would, would Steve, did you talk to Steve Upton? Did I you? talked to Steve many times about it, but uh, um, he didn't get involved with the nuts and bolts. Mm. I mean, he, he, he was too busy just trying to make, keep himself illegal. <laughs> um, well, maybe we can get Dick to help track down the plans. Yeah. But thank you for coming in, mm. and I hope you have feel a little bit better about before. Okay, now in the meantime, uh, um, where Kevin said they, uh, was it Mike Phillips and you went yeah, in there? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Okay, you went in there and it patched the bad, the serious mm -hmm. spots. One part, you know, as you're coming in where he said it's shortchanged, mm -hmm. uh, that, that is uh, the edge of the road, is, it's narrow in there between that little island, yeah. that planter island in the it middle is. where a sign is. And, uh, and that side of the, uh, the road is, was all deteriorated and broken up from the water running down along that side of that road. Now he says that's our, ours, then the, you know, according to what he has for information. Uh, going on, if he's going on the basis of what's at the, the Registry of Deeds, that's only a copy of the definitive plan. It's not a copy <coughs> of not a copy of the as -built. I think you have the assessor's map. This this is the assessor's map, which is what well, yeah, um, I mean, which which, which is basically uh, what people are being taxed upon, and it shows the layout of the town's right of way per se. Um, <coughs> the very specific area where he's talking about, um, I agree with him wholeheartedly. I mean, you you got those set of trees that are right there, right yeah. on top of it, and and actually. Um, that whole row of trees is actually on town property, according mm -hmm. to this. Um, Wh which row of trees? That row oh, of trees, right? right so, yeah, in? yeah. As soon as you come in, yeah. So, so you see, see that all that green right there, mm -hmm. yeah. which is all the trees. Yeah. Would you do me a favor? Yeah. Cut, cut, cut that back a little bit. Out of there so yeah. We can see the sign. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> He's getting somewhere tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you for coming in. Thanks. Thank okay, you. You'll work, you'll work with you. Dick, and then he obviously you'll have snows or whatever. We'll go, the rest along, of the way we'll go along with maintenance for the yeah. time being and sure. see how it works out. With okay. That. But okay. in the growth stage, getting to the point of getting the job done right, I would assume that we'll probably get involved with some engineering drawings again. Um, I don't know, Kevin. How do, how do you? It's, as it's, far as what, well, let me ask you this. Are you looking for, I mean, because realistically, we can, we can have the drawings, but unless there's pins someplace, <clears throat> unless you survey it, um, then you're not, it's going to be a, 
ballpark. I think this may be where it is. I, I'm not a surveyor. I, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pretend to be a surveyor. Um, you know, I, I can find pins and I can make a measurement off of the pin, but you know, as a road curves, the whole thing there, that's, that's beyond what I can do. Um, so if they're looking for anything that's very specific, now you're talking about bringing in a surveying crew yeah, the, um, to be able to go ahead and do that. The thing I was referring to is that of the 50 foot way that gets accepted by the state and the, you know, the, the land courts or whatever they call it, is, um, comes off of the as built. And that means that they, wherever the road got put, you go to the center line of the road and you got 20, you know, 25 feet that way and 25 feet this way on a 50 foot way. Meaning that when you get a 25 foot paved section, you got 12 feet on each side, which is what, town, what the town is getting paid for in, on the cherry sheet. On when, uh, here, let me back up. I'm just going off of what I'm able to see, and again, this is small scale. It's not on, on a large computer, um, but it's not 25 feet from center line oh. to center line, because if you actually look at it, what I'm looking at is from center line to the north side, you're, you've got your, your uh, um, 12 feet of pavement, and then it looks like possibly maybe about another three feet or four feet of kind of layout. But when you're actually looking at the south side, the side you're looking more. at much more. So going off of the theory that um, the original drawings were probably, this is how it's supposed to go, but the as-builts showing where this is at this point in time, unless, unless these maps are messed up. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that these are, you know, The only thing I can think of is percent. that the last building to be put up in that development was 56 Lee Road portion. Not and one heritage. That building is uh, six has six units in it, and it's sort of like an L shape. Mm -hmm. That was added after the basic, uh, you know, the other uh, thirty-two units were already constructed, or the layouts were already done. So it's quite possible when they put that in as an add-on later on that you couldn't move the road. Right. If the road had to go three feet, like he says, from the other side. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it would have caused complications. Yeah. I'm guessing, I'm only guessing sure. at that part. But uh, all I can say is that uh, we want to pretty the place up. It looks nice the way mm -hmm. we take care of it. And we spend it a does. ton of money to mm -hmm. snows. And, uh, uh, they do a nice job, yeah, too. Mm -hmm. they really yeah. do. It's a nice area. Sure. And uh, basically the town, we pay a lot of taxes and the town gets paid for snow plowing. That's it. Well. And a road in about three huh? to five years. And what? a road in about three to three yeah. years or so. Well, yeah. So, so I'm, uh, that's Thank our you. end of the story. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Yes. And thank Thanks. you for understanding about our pavement management plan. Yeah, well, uh, we can go along with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but well, between now and then, well, we hope that there's some sort of um, progressive, well, thing, progressive yeah. thing that we can see or. I, mm -hmm. I, I would for, I would say that Kevin is very wonderful, uh, like I said, and he would probably be willing to work on the good by the Thanks. post box. Good. Thank you. Yeah, because Thank that you. is yeah, a safety that issue. That's not a problem. And, <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> I could see Have a good that. Say hi to Mike for me. Okay, well. Thanks, Wendy. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can I, Mike, you like family. Oh, yeah. Um, if I could just touch on real quick about the Sugarloaf Cemetery. Sure. Sure, um, yeah, Kevin. that's on the agenda, the reg sample regulations that we're looking yeah. at. Yeah. Uh, well, this, this is more for just the Sugarloaf Street for the Oh, for I'm the fencing. sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The that's fencing. Okay. Um, what I did was I looked at the, I don't know, was it an RFB, RF? Mm -hmm. It was just, a, uh, I was seeking quotes. Okay, so, so part of the single, uh, seeking the quotes, but actually part of the scope of work states that the fencing will be minimum of 12 inches, maximum of 24 inches away from the property line. Okay, so what we did was, is obviously that's already been surveyed, it's already been staked out. 
so what we did was we ran ahead, we went ahead and we ran a line from point A to point B, from the back all the way to the front. Where the looks like quote unquote curbing, um, half of it is on their property, half of it is on our property. And as you go back further, this quote unquote curbing gets more towards on the town side, which is fine. Kevin, excuse me, when you say there's ours, you're talking ours being the town, theirs Down being and the theirs cemetery? being being the next door neighbor oh, private the owner, property. Property. which is the right. uh, computer shop. Yep. So long story short is, is we went in there and we thought we were just going to be able to go ahead and pop this thing out. So we get in there with a the backhoe and start grabbing a corner and all of a sudden we're lifting a 15 foot section of concrete pad. It looks like that could possibly have been a foundation at one point in time footings and a poured I talked with the landowner and I said you know I says I'm not saying this is what we're going to do because we did make some some marks on there the area for for dig safe to make sure because I know they have gas there and I don't want to get tied into the gas whatsoever mm -hmm. um, a couple options we had originally before I looked at the scope of work was is to go ahead clean off that area and then and then use a basically a, a pavement breaker and go in there and, and break their pad away from our curb or, or foundation, per se. Um, but as soon as I saw that the, the scope of work, um, it brings it right outside of it. So we really shouldn't have to touch that concrete. Now, the only other issue when you run into that is when you get all the way near the end where that concrete is, is there is a, a stone. It's basically, uh, you can't read it anymore because it's, it's so old. Um, if we're staying 12 inches or if they're staying 12 inches off the property line, I'm going to say probably half of that stone is going to be underneath the fence. So I'm just trying to bring some things to light. That's all. Uh, what, what's the, do we have a policy about that kind of stuff? I have no idea. Do, um, it's an open fence though, right? What, what, that is correct. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be an open fence. Yeah, it's a split rail fence, but I just want to be, you know, people it's aware of it. Because if somebody goes by and they look at it and say, oh my God, you know, look at that, you know, they, they, they put the fence up and, and half the gravestone is, is mm -hmm. well, it's because of the scope of work of how we did it. So now whether they, whether they can amend that a little bit or not, that's completely up to you guys on how you want to deal with that. It but. was totally driven by the Historical Commission right. as they put up this all together for the big project ran out of money, and this was included in the initial project, so this is a continuation sure. of that. So, so we'll know. need to work with them, the company, and you yeah. mm -hmm. to figure that out. I, I think we should be able to re get it resolved. It, it, it's not going to be a cost changer, right? No, okay. no, no. Anything, it, it'll basically, all it's going to be, and realistically, you know, if, if we need to go ahead and, and move over a little bit, and it's in that area where you want to call it the foundation, where you can want to call it a curb, or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. Wherever they're going to go ahead and they're going to put that post, instead of trying to rip the whole thing out, which is already covered in dirt and grass, the whole nine yep. yards, mm -hmm. we can just go ahead and we can excavate that one small area right there. You know, okay. we can get in there, but it's still going to require us to get in there. We're going to end up having to uh, rent a, um, a jackhammer or a drill, and we're still going to end up having to run. Why, uh, rent why don't we there. set up a site visit so, with all the parties right. uh, sometime? Mm -hmm. Because it's something I'm really not going to be able to do, like a core drill. I'm hoping because, to have the contract for you next the meeting holes, to the sign. The hole is yeah. probably, well, because it's, what, a six-by-six six granite? Right. So you're going to have probably at least 10 inches. And, and even when we, when we borrow tools from, from local places, that I know they don't have a 12-inch right. um, hole saw, per se. Okay. So, but that is something that we can go ahead and accomplish. Oh. And because I haven't seen you guys in forever. Right. Um, the uh, the elementary school um, going over there in the front of the building, um, we did go ahead and try to make sure that was taken care of before school opened. Uh, going off with, with what Kip said, we went ahead and, and we looked at it, set up our drainage so everything's draining down into that main drain in the center. And, and Kevin, then, I want to thank you for that because mm -hmm. that is a it was a safety issue. Yeah. Really and then the very front of the building where, where there was like four squares, three or four squares that were in the front. Yes. I don't know what, what they were they trees. Be trees. Is that what it was? Yeah. Because we were trying to figure it out, and I asked Mike. I was like, "What was here?" And he's like, "I don't know." Thank so anyway, so what we ended up doing is we ended up busting that up a little bit, and we tried to smooth it out. So it's yep. it's a little bit. So it was a little bit nicer. Right. So. Um, but I but I do want to thank you. Yeah, and eventually we'd love to redo that front. I mean, there's some pretty big gaps in in the concrete there yeah. for wheelchairs and stuff if you're coming through there. Exactly. So I know that's 
on the pavement and playing right. something. And, and there is, but you know, and then you've got some trip hazards in there also. Yeah, there was you know, a few. Where the, where the curbing meets the exactly. asphalt. And, yep. You know, at now you're talking point. ADA issues and the whole nine yards. And, right. So, yeah, it starts to get So at some pretty, point we'd want to redo that. but um, Pretty involved. But it was nice to smooth out what you did for now. Cool. Yeah, we got to know that fairly cheaply, too. I mean, yep. I think uh, material-wise, it was less than $1,500 yep. um, that I absorbed through our projects, part of my budget. Um, so that way, that section right there really didn't cost the school anything. So yep. that was because, realistically, that piece of property right there is technically town property. Sure. It's being managed and maintained by... Union 38, um, and then we also went out to the backside that, that Kip and I went and looked mm -hmm. at, and we uh, uh, graded the area out a little bit, so that way there was a little bit better drainage because there was issue with the drainage coming from the building to that first catch basin, yeah. and that's what was backing up into the building, so we took care of that one section right there, so we should have Great. no issues there. At that was the total this savings to the community of close to $23,000, yeah. $23, $18,000 $18, for the front entry where they wanted. So, yeah. Kevin, that's amazing. Yep. And I much, just guys. want to say thank you. And again, thank you to all the highway department yeah. for putting in the disc to the it's catch basin because that was a huge savings um, to the town. And um, thank you. We're just doing our job. I know, but you doing are a doing a job. really thank a good you. job. We try. So thank you. We truly do. Is there anything you. you wanted to mention? Because um, we have to go to an executive nope. session. I'm one, good. I, okay. I'm right. One question <laughs> for you, and maybe somebody already knows this. Um, when was the mower going to come? Actually, the mower showed yesterday. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, good. It, it Great. took forever because what the issue was what is we were... <laughs> Going back and forth, uh, we were, and, and Chuck was extremely instrumental in this. He, he was. was dogging hard, <laughs> like daily phone calls, two, three a day, other end of the phone. four, five emails a day saying, what's going on? This was supposed to be done in the springtime. Please go ahead and help us out. What can we do? Is there anything we can do to help this process move along? Yeah. Uh, basically what it was was originally in the past is, is Eversource would go ahead and, and issue different purchase orders to the different towns. And they decided, which I understand where they're coming from, they just want to do one purchase order. So it's easier for them to try and keep track of what's going on. Yeah. And there was a few towns that went ahead and they dragged their feet as far as getting all the signatures that needed to be signed yeah. to be able to send to Eversource to make sure that everybody was, was in the program, the whole nine yards. Um, so again, long story short is, is, is it's here. Um, we're putting in a radio, we're putting on some additional lights to make sure that we're not gonna have any issues. We're going to attempt to go ahead and get the four weeks or the, the other towns their time in this season so that oh, way good. we're not back off of year. Right. Um, so that way it, it won't be six years. It'll still be the five-year contract. And um, as far as I know, we went ahead and we've already sent out the invoice to Eversource. And Eversource will be cutting us the check. And then we end up paying the leasing company. So Sounds um, good. That's, that's coming right along. Um, Thank you. You know, it looks Thank good, you, you know, the machine's in E, done an M. So, um, nice. Thank you, Kevin. So yeah. You should be in good shape. Good. Thank you. And please thank Chuck. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, no, Chuck, like I said, Chuck's been doing a real good job. Keep, He's good at beating on people. I keep trying to remember this. You're the ADA coordinator, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. along with the other um, 17. We, Kevin's things. very good and very diligent about that aspect of work we need to be complying with. Um, the grants are out now for mm -hmm. plans, and I would like the town to apply. We made a commitment. We're supposed to be having a full accessibility plan. It's something we under a block grant for to name one uh, grant that we're we participate in. We're supposed to be doing that. We've been limping along with. We promised to do it for several years. The grant there's a grant opportunity to do a plan. Um, there is a match requirement. Uh, that match requirement might be something either, you know, I don't know if it'd be a reserve fund transfer or a special mm -hmm. town meeting, but I'd like to go ahead and apply for that and move forward to to Do, do you want to tell, do you want to vote on that, Wendy? Or just um, a consensus? I'll come back. Okay. okay. Um, actually, last last Wednesday, I did go down to Hadley <laughs> and attended the, uh, uh, the ADA um, workshop, per se, and it was, it was very informative. Um, and I key brought attended back a lot one of information. Well. Okay, so. thanks. One other thing I just wanted to mention, I had had an email from Wendy about the M, 
AII training you did at the... Oh, MIIA? MI, yeah. Yep. So it's one how we get assurance. Yeah, and I just, there was discount. great feedback on, on your skill and your quality and Good. training and safety, and uh, I just wanted to pass that along that, you know, it was nice to get that Absolutely. letter. Absolutely. Um, your recognition of how well you do. And, and how you're so saving us you. money, because it's discount on our insurance. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. we are fully appreciative of that. You know, one of the things that Wendy was able to share with me was, was, which I had not really seen before, is there's multiple things that we can do, small little things, little trainings here, little trainings there, and each one of those equals to what, ball, ballpark, about 2%? Yes, it's about 2%. Whatever two, it's 2%. that section would be. So, you know, if we went ahead and we did X, Y, Z, then we would have the ability to save 2% on our mm -hmm. uh, automotive. You know, and right. if we did this, we'd be able to save 2% on our workers' comp. Um, I think there's a cap. Before, I think there's so. a cap of 10% total in correct. any one yep. year. Right. But it is um, yeah. we can participate, and it's right. wonderful that you're willing to do that because oh, certainly. it's it's a huge discount because those mm -hmm. expenses are. I'm, I'm the taxpayer too, so yep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> trying to save my money. Um, we well, are working with uh, uh, with Wendy and Key as far as uh, putting together the MIA uh, grant for this year. Um, what I'm looking at is uh, we're looking at a safety trailer so that way it automatically comes with the barricades and the, and the cones and the whole nine yards. Mm. And the other part, because we have $10,000, I talked with uh, Chief Pachurik and he said, you know, he said, you can have the whole 10 grand this year. Um, he says next year I'd probably be looking for, for more, for maybe possibly some cameras around the exterior, whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. Not allowed to do interior, but you're allowed to do exterior. Um, the, the, to make up the difference, uh, what I'm looking at is backup cameras for the, uh, for the big trucks. Mm. So that way, we go ahead and we do that. Not only is it safer for us, it's safer for the drivers, it's safer for the people around all the way around, but now we're going to get a discount because now we're showing that we're trying to go forward and, and prove more safety for uh, the community. So that's $10,000 comes as a grant? That is correct. No match, no nothing. Uh, actually, that's where, because I ran the grant, I wrote the grant last year, and that's where we got our uh, trench box from. Okay. So it was $9,147 is what the box cost us. So. And, and I have shared that with, with Waitley. Um, you know, if any of the other, you know, Waitley or Sunderland, they need the trench box, it, it's a safety thing. Absolutely. You know, go ahead and use it. it. I mean, you know, if you bust it, hey, you know, you got to fix it, you got to replace it or whatever, but... Bottom line is, is you know, my personal opinion, and, and hopefully I'm right in the right direction, is, is if we can share something like that to make sure somebody doesn't die, Absolutely. I think it's cheap money. Well, Absolutely, that, Kevin. Sure. Yeah. Any life safety thing is important. That's the number one priority. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you. Yeah, great Have a nice you evening. Okay, um, we are, are going to go into executive session, but Bruce has been here so patiently. Um, so, Wendy, maybe you and Bruce can update us on the bylaws real quickly. Um, before we go to... I'll let Bruce do that if he wants to. Um, so, Bruce, can you talk about that um, fairly quickly? Because I, I don't want you to have we to have wait until we get done executive session. We have a I'm number the, of I'm other items anyway. on the agenda. Yeah, then we'll have to come back. Well, I really hadn't come down to give an update or anything, so, I mean, what do you want? I mean, we had well, a meeting last night, uh, and I guess, if, uh, if anything, we found out how confused we really are trying to work with this bylaws, if that's what you want to call them. And uh, I think the consensus has been, you know what, just take it one step at a time, start from the beginning of the book, and then kind of two steps forward, one step back type of operation. Um, we were initially, we're just going to try to eliminate some of the easy stuff, but uh, everything is just so spread out into different chapters that it's all intertwined. And it's kind of like, well, okay, let's see if we can do one section at a time as we come across another section that we feel should be moved back, then discuss that at that point in time. But, uh, you know, it, it's, I think it's probably going to go a little slower than, you know, most people anticipated, but it's something that can be done with uh, a little patience and, you know, and I, I, well, know, I for think the, the people that, you know, um, as you know, um, uh, Natalie McCormick and Judy Condell and myself and Wendy and Barbara as officio and we're trying to get Dick, Dick. to come on yeah. board, <laughs> Kalashevsky, uh, as our historian. 
Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, I you know I uh, have to speak highly of uh, Natalie and uh, Judy, even though I didn't had never met him before. Uh, you know, I kind of given them homework, if that's what you want to call, <laughs> uh, from their first meeting, and uh, they diligently had pursued it and good. had come up with a lot of good points for discussion. And unfortunately, we just ran out of time uh, last night. So. Yeah. But I think it'll come together as we kind of dig into it, and, and with Wendy's, Wendy and Barbara's guidance, uh, I'm, I'm sure we can do something there. That's good. Well, that's well, wonderful. It's a, it's a big I, task. Yeah. And if anybody really here again, it. as long as I'm on uh, out here, if anybody's got any suggestions or anything, uh, this uh, committee is wide open to suggestions. Wonderful. Uh, the more input we have, uh, will help. You know, I, I don't like to leave it wide open like that, but by the same token, if we're going to try to revamp these bylaws and we don't get as much input as we possibly can, then when it gets to the town floor, things can be stopped in a heartbeat. So yeah. um, I'd like to leave it open to you know, if anybody does have suggestions and that we can call through and try to answer or do something with those suggestions uh, if, the, if they're good suggestions and incorporate them uh, and or have answers for them um, you know at some point in time you know if and when this uh, changes go to town meeting so. well I appreciate you um, using common sense on this and also just being really diligent to attack it because mm. um, they've been jumbled together for many a year well, as I said, uh, you know, with uh, Wendy's and Barbara's guidance uh, and the crew we've got, and I think we'll, we'll be able to pull something off. Thank you, Bruce. Great. Thanks, I, re I really appreciate your efforts, seriously. Um, okay. Do you want to make a motion to go into executive sure. session? I well, actually have it for you to read. As <clears throat> oh, okay. The, j the chair declares and moves pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, that the board go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation as an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigating position of the select board regarding enforcement actions. We will um, come back in open session to um, finish our agenda. You, you still vote, but since it... it required you to make a declaration. It made sense to attach it to the motion itself. So a second and a half. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Henry Camosa. Okay, we're, we're, we're opening the meeting again. So I make a motion to have um, Wendy Foxman um, contact uh, town council. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, Next item on the agenda is the memo from town council on um, the marijuana. I, you know what? Truthfully, I haven't had a chance to read enough, it. I have not had enough time to read okay. it. Okay, I yeah. put it on here for you to. St we need to focus on this. Mm -hmm. I would like you to read that. I yep. also found uh, the memo that Amherst has circulated, in, and yep. yes. that's also provided. Please wrap your heads around that. Yep. I will do the same, and on the next agenda, we will discuss it further. Um, whether or not we need to, in light of the changes and everything that's going on, maybe have a short moratorium in order to get in place whatever we need to get in Correct. place. Correct. So okay. just please read both of those carefully. I will. I will. And I, I, also, I have to read it over and over again to yeah, grasp. There's a, lot, there's a lot here. Um, I also have not had a chance to read the cemetery rules regulations. Oh, yeah. They're also first reading. Okay, um, good. Put them in here. Okay. I'd like to I've, start doing really that bad. more often. I'm sorry. Giving you stuff ahead uh, at a meeting, meeting first, ahead of like time. a first oh, reading. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Great. That's wonderful because I, I didn't come in early. <laughs> I, I went Kinda. to that um, seeds meeting, so I didn't get here early enough to read it. So, okay, thanks. No, you know, I take responsibility, right. so I'm going to try to do that for things. Great. So um, you look at it once and you have it in your folder and you think about it and you come back and we can better discuss it and decide. Okay, great. and Thank so um, the other thing you wanted us to do was to. Um, Award extend the contract to Cartographic Associates. Yes, um, for many years apparently the town has been talking about adding a data layer to the GIS and the assessors maps, which would include all the uh, water lines, sewer lines, and 
um, ba uh, catch basins and stormwater lines. And it's been put off and put off and put off. The money's there and all of that. Um, it's just it's kind of an extension of the work that Cartographic's been doing for the town. So uh, we met with them and John Coderre from the assessors and Karen Menard from the assessors. Um, the two, um, one of the two water districts was there. Kevin was there from DPW. I think Ken, uh, both um, Dick Kalashevsky and Kyle Scott were there. And everyone thought it was a good idea. And John said, let's do it. We have the money. Let's do it. It will be very helpful to know where all the lines are. They have where the connections are, mm -hmm. but that the rest has not been laid out. And um, it's about a like, $7,600 contract. Okay. I guess my question is, the town highway department doesn't know where all these, how do these people know where they are? They reviewed that, and there will be some data um, collection, and I know that Kevin talked about talking with HAP, yeah. Who, former, who, sure. who does know a lot more. Yeah. And I guess uh, it's not really clear to me because Roger was not there, so Brian Nardowitz talked about Roger had done some kind of work um, through some grant, and at any rate, it, it's getting pulled together. If you look through, um, I think I gave you a copy. Yeah, I have the scope. we have the scope yeah. of services. Well, Bruce, Bruce would like to make a comment. Because we no. talked Bruce, about sorry. we could save some money by reducing... Um, the um, that kind of data collection, but it was like three hundred dollars or something. We said, yeah. Yeah. "It's you know, I, it, no, come up." We, we <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just because the you yes. know the this this has uh, been an uh, ongoing. It was already old money when I first became assessor, which would have been ten years ago. And it had been discussed and discussed and discussed at that point in time. And every time it brought up, it uh, um, was, we can do it cheaper. We can do it cheaper. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, 10 plus years later, we still don't have a decent GIS system. Uh, even though the money's reserved, the money has been reserved. It was a contribution of multiple departments. It was just not town meeting. It was a, a, a water department and a fire department. I believe it might have been old Deerfield. Uh, it was a combination of monies. Everybody was on this 10 plus years ago. Yeah. And as far as this, no, you're probably not going to get 100% uh, GIS layer with this uh, because too many people have gone by the wayside, they retired, left town, or whatever, when uh, a lot of this stuff was put near mines. But there is records with Weston and Samptons and some of the engineers that we've had. And that's what CIA is, is planning on doing, is pu uh, pooling all that information and uh, putting that together to create a, um, uh, some good GIS layers, and, as well as any engineering that we have in the future at that point in time that could be put on with this. So, so are, you, are you suggesting that this company is going to do the research to find where and locate all of the water and sewer lines? No. No. No, they are so. going to pull together any existing engineering that has been done by the different companies, what is available by Western Sampson, by Town Records, things like that. So, well, no, right, there, I, it I, says, let me rephrase that. that I, don't, I, I didn't mean that they're going to physically go out and locate them, but they're going to pool all the resources from engineering and the sources you mentioned. Yes. And they're going to set up and say, okay, this one goes on North Main Street, this goes, and then they're going to put it on yes. the overlay. Okay. Yes, that's, it. that's exactly what so they're the going to do. So the money is not just for them to add it, it's for them to do the research of where they're going. Right. Okay. okay. We, we, there's already GIS layers on that, sure. on that website. Yep. It just said, and I think if you looked at it, there, there is partial fire hydrants listed on there. Uh, there is partial drains. There is partial sewer band holes. Yep. But it's very incomplete. That, well, that was the information that was like, it's here, okay, fine. But there's a lot of other information out there because of fire, like the uh, um, water department, it doesn't have pipe sizes and so forth like that. Some of that stuff is, is available and that's the kind of stuff that would be going on to that uh, CAI, uh, onto, onto the GIS layers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, myself, I would, you know, totally in support of it. You know, because it has been ongoing forever. Well, in and case they want to know, the water main in front of my house is eight inches because it just blew up. So. It's what? It just blew up, so I, I know that's an eight inch pipe. 
So, aren't you lucky? Yeah. But <laughs> some of this said that uh, GI, GIS data development is not included in this service, um, and then there was, right. and then there's two like nineteen hundred and fifty dollars, and that's an annual fee to have access to, I guess, access to the program, right? I, I would think, a year. I mean, there's certain certain fees like a staff site setup one-time fee, and then you know some other one-time fees of data conversion and access GIS editor setup. So it seems like there's a lot of computer programming to kind of get, get access to that. And then there's an optional connectivity services one-time fee as well. And that's the big chunk of the, mm -hmm. that must be the optional to get in the system to begin with. You have a one-time access fee, but the, um, the it's 2,000 bucks a year, which I assume is set out of the assessor budget. I mean, I think so, right? I'm, there again, I'm not familiar. There again, it it was tabled every time it was brought up. So, yep. so I we had Where never really yep. got into something like this. Uh, so I'm not familiar what the uh, what those charges would be. I mean, that would have to be something you'd have to. But yep. I I know the basic program is way overdue for a, pay, a town this size. The yep. lack of records that we have, they need to be assembled in a spot. Um, some of the records that are included in the bylaws, they're supposed to be in town clerk's office. I know. They have no idea where they are. Uh, and this is the kind of information, if they, want, you know, if they want to pool together what information is available. This is a tool. Uh, and start assembling this stuff and the town keeps it updated, then you know what, 20 years down the road, we won't be in the same position where we have to call uh, the ex-highway super and say, hey, do you remember uh, mm -hmm. this down here? Or do you remember that? And that's where we're at right now. Right. And, it's, it, it, it's, and, it, and it shouldn't be for a town this size. Yep. So. And I, I, I agree. Know, the assessors have reviewed this. Um, yep. And I said, you, do you want to approve this? No, we want the board, select board to approve it. So it's... Well, I, I, I'm agreeing with Bruce that we need to bring the town to the 21st mm. century. Absolutely. And that was part of, I mean, I've supported this right from the beginning. And so. um, I, it's just trying to get everybody on board. But what is nice that we dragged our feet enough that the water districts have all their stuff done. So well, at least we'll get the so, water district stuff in. So I, mo I moved yeah. to award extend contract with uh, to CI. A cartographic association associates for additional of PWIM layers to GIS assessors maps. I second, second that. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The contract. I mean, you all have it, but you can sign. And that um, was my only comment, and I'll say good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for um, nice. sticking Very around for that. Oh, that was, yeah. I it appreciate that, Bruce. It's, it, that has been very important on our desk forever. I know. Many years. I know. So my, my motto of my tenure is let's finish up these things. Yes. That's yeah. why we're doing the bylaws, right? That's right. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's why we're doing I said my motto is to finish these things that have been... Well, you know, yeah. you know, wrap them up that you've been talking about for a while. So. Um, next item on the agenda is move to appoint Jennifer Wallace to the position of assistant town clerk, grade two, step one on the 2018 compensation plan. Second. Um, do you, I meant to bring that do you amount, wanna, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'll talk about her. Would you? Want to? Um, yes, we had a, we lucky had good um, applicants for the position and um, Barbara and I and Brenda and Sarah um, for the second interviews with the f finalists um, uh, met and it was very difficult, um, but one of the two semi-finalists uh, um, withdrew, uh, had another job or something. So um, we're excited. Um, we feel like uh, Jen, Jen will be a very good fit. Um, she wants to start on the 30th, which is... Um, Barbara understands that and so anyway um, and ca actually Trevor was here the day she walked her resume mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, weeks and weeks ago <laughs> seemed very nice so. excited to have full staff in there for, for them and we'll get get moving again oh, it's really nice great. Yep. so um, if there's no further discussion oh. all those in favor Question? Aye. Aye. I was just going to say it came up in the interview I think uh, that her mother had been a town clerk 
um, oh, nice. in another town, and um, so I plumbed that a little bit with her. You know, so <laughs> I take advantage of that. <laughs> yeah. Good. So. Um, next I item second. on the agenda is to appoint Meg Ryan as a Community Development Block Grant Advisory Board member. Second. To so. I can explain that. Um, Meg is the outreach coordinator. Wonderful. She lives here in Deerfield. Um, the, for this block grant that we get, uh, the town is supposed to, each of the four towns in the grant is supposed to appoint someone to this advisory board that simply meets by bureaucratic reasons <laughs> to review quarterly reports. Um, and she was interested in doing I spoke with her today, realizes this isn't part of their outreach director job. She's very interested. She wants to learn more about this. And so we've great. gone for many years without having anybody. So, so is, it, is it the actress business slowing down for her? Give it back, Ryan. No, but if you read the newspaper, it had a wonderful story about her and, she's, and she's, what she's doing. She loves her she work is here. She's a wonderful asset yep. to, the, to the seniors. And, um, um, She'd love to right. come before the board. I said, we'll work with Mar mm -hmm. uh, Marlene to do that and yep. um, talk so about all the good work she's doing. She has, she, I talked to her today. She has some interesting, wonderful ideas. So but that's separate from this. This is her residential uh, contribution. So. Well, that's wonderful. Do we second? So, all second those in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful. OK. Um, do you want to sign the appointment, uh, or do you want us to stamp it? Oh, we're we're oh, signing it right okay. now. There you go. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was the official one. No, she's no. an employee. We, right. we have the uh, yep. letter. So, can oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, then uh, the only other thing under new business. Do you do you want us to make? I mean, I don't have any problem with um, Craig Warner's letter about. The well, I was going to put him on the next meeting agenda okay. to come in. He's come. He's scheduled to come in at 6:30 okay. at the next. Oh, all weeks. right. I just didn't know if you. I didn't know what the follow-up was. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we need to get a value attached to the land and get us. Right. Okay. Location and all yep. of that. So um, and then the only other thing me. is, um, I, I um, got Julie met with Julie uh, Cowan at the. Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Committee meeting this afternoon, and um, to be a PACE community. This is a energy for. It's it it's sort of like a grant program for businesses, and I immediately thought of like Pelican and mm -hmm. our businesses in the industrial park and stuff. Anyway, you have to become a PACE community, and my understanding is it's just a vote of the select board, but. What you have to do is decide how you want the billing of the audits and the credits and all that kind of stuff. It's a little complicated. So it seems like before we can discuss it, we need to set Julie up with a meeting with you and Barbara. She's the one I met with for three hours two days ago. <laughs> right. Well, no, she <laughs> but we said, never talked she, about that. No, she said we have all kinds of potential here, and that and I mm -hmm. she, after she, I said I'm enthusiastic and any, anything that will help our businesses. Um, or, or promote businesses. Um, she said to set up a meeting with Barbara and you and her. And then um, Jessica Atwood at the meeting said she would like to sit in because this, she wants to listen to you know, how it runs. Because she didn't have a, I mean, this would be the first mm -hmm. community in Franklin County. Okay. So well, I'm meeting with Jessica on um, Friday to follow up on the downtown. OK, so I was right. hoping that you would set up a meeting with Barbara so that Barbara understood what was going on and we understood the scope of the work involved to be now why, a pace. Why community. is the town treasurer clerk collector? Is it from uh, because the, the treasurer the census have uh, you can set up having an independent third par party do the billing, uh, the auditing and the credit credits. It's a complicated process. Yeah. Or we can do it ourselves and there is some small incentive for us if we do it. Okay. But I don't want to make a decision for Barbara until Barbara has an opportunity to get a grasp of what. Okay. And, and if we have a ton of business, I mean, if, say, Pelican and Atlantic Furniture and all these companies decide to do this, I mean, we actually could have a huge, um, you know, workload maybe. So I, I would appreciate I, you know, I'm not familiar with this program. Did... did um, 
she say any other Franklin County towns were involved in this at um, this point? Or? Well, there was not very many towns at the table, so I, you know. No, but she's from Mass Development. They work yes. statewide. So d did she mention? Well, she's trying to get she's trying to get um, money spent out here, and they have um, a manufacturing company in Pittsfield, and so, and a company in Springfield that are moving forward right now. But she's trying to get something mm -hmm. further up. 91 right. and I said that we would be very interested because mm -hmm. I don't think Pelican has any solar do they I don't think so don't. and there's no solar down in our industrial park as far as I can tell so I, I mean I think if it's I don't want to say nothing is free but yeah I'll um, look into it further and see it's, 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 it's an incentive it's program that's supposed to have been worked in other parts of the country very successfully and it's an opportunity Massachusetts Department of Energy has um, signed on and um, it's, they're rolling it out January 1st so I thought well let's just if you guys are on board with it well, let's I'm move forward to to it. It, yeah sure. and and let's let's try to get something happening in our town mm -hmm. and Julie's the one I mentioned at your last meeting that I was going to be meeting with her she, I'd been at two meetings where she was at and she talked at length about all these resources they have yeah. and yeah. I just I we spent three hours together and um, I told her about all our projects Great. all of them the church and thank the you school it's it's the, the it's called the pace community energy grants but it's the the that's the acronym but it's property assessed clean energy program and it's you know money they're rolling out with the manufacturing innovative grants and the idea is to retain jobs in their community as well as attract jobs mm -hmm. so um, they're trying by to reducing the energy cost co by keeping is there the a is it a tax well it's a betterment it's a betterment um, assessment situation so um, you know we we will get tax dollars out of it because it's you know increasing the value of their property but um, Okay, we'll look into it. Yeah. Just from solar? No, well, it's, it, I, I, she was using solar as an example. Okay. But I, my understanding of it could be multiple different, you know, I, I didn't think it was limited to solar, but okay. we were just talking about solar because solar is, like, the easiest thing to do. But there was wind. She was talking about wind. We're not um, eligible. I mean, I wouldn't think that we, we did a, up on the R Hill, we did a windmill thing, and we didn't. Um, it's not enough early wind 80s, to, we yeah, not enough yeah. wind to put in a windmill because we were thinking of putting a windmill in to do to our up. well yeah. on the top of the hill behind my house, and uh, there wasn't enough wind. So I wouldn't think that there's enough wind here, and we have inversions in the spring and the fall, so which is stagnant air. So I don't, I, I wouldn't yeah. think that wind is a possibility here at all. But she was tr thinking of wind up in the hill towns. If anyone was interested in the hills, but they talking about Windsor earlier. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to have a company big enough to. Um, yeah. the, the, it's a minimum of three hundred thousand dollars in. Um, you know the program. It really it doesn't make sense if you're going to do anything less than three hundred thousand. So you're talking about serious investment money and stuff like that. So it would be your bigger companies, I think. Mm -hmm. But I've thought, why would we want to stand in the way of that? We, if we want to sign on board, why not? Um, but it's just a vote to become, we have to become a PACE community. And then um, that allows companies within our town to apply to mass development. Are there any are there any other strings that we don't know of? Um, that's what I'll find out. That's what, <laughs> yes. that's, sure I'm sure down. there is, Kip, and that's why you're meeting, number one, we're meeting with Barbara first before we commit to do, handle the processing because I'm not sure how, how much work that is. And also you need to reach out to the, our business community and see if anybody is interested at all. But if you're going to have the opportunity to cut your energy bills, why wouldn't you, you know? Well, I, the only thing I can say to that is that I know Deerfield 
decided several years ago to be part of that stretch energy code. And uh, basically the town got $150,000. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody who's done any work in this town has paid dearly for it ever since. So, Well, I, there were advantages at the time. And that's what we have to wait get. That's why. Well, that's why I wanted to know if there's any other strings attached. That well, you don't really this is why we're going to have them come, come and in. talk to Wendy sure. and meet. And, yep. you well, know, actually, I'll, I'll sure. read it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But um, I'm st I'm a, I'm totally stretched to the end. I'm working 60 hours a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we need, I need somebody else, and I talked with her about this. Uh, I, I, we've talked about right. it, and I'm going to prepare something and submit it uh, for an economic development, right. a, a planner slash yep. economic development or community development. Mm -hmm. um, I have all these projects. I couldn't stop. I, the more I told her about, the more, the more I could you think remember. of, you know, things <laughs> that know. we the town has talked about and and that are either. Um, all real things, not, sure. nothing pie in the sky, just yep. all the various things, including the treatment plant and, yep. and um, just the need for someone to devote their time to these things to make sure we move them along. Um, we already signed it. Um, so um, I thought I had more to say on my report before we went into the other session. Yeah, you were talking about... Well, um, I know you've been interested, in, and Kip, you were here for some of it, the insurance trust meeting. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know if you wanted to say anything about that or have me say anything uh, about you that. Can, you can speak for it. Uh, well, um, as a follow-up, today the town administrators of the four towns and the school district and the uh, school administrators met. We've been meeting on an occasional basis, and today we had Joe Shea, who's the director of the insurance trust there, and um, um, we need to look at the process of the trust and the vote the timing of the votes and the votes themselves to determine if it was actually done um, correctly. Um, um, and not all the ta member towns, a good half of them haven't voted to do that yet. So we're really trying to get the ducks in order to, to move that forward. Um, when you say voted, is that for the changes? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, so. I, I think from my take on that <clears throat> is that whether you like the changes or you don't like the changes it's just a matter of you're going to pay one way or the other you know if you vote for the changes that I think they recommended some of the benefits will be cut it will cost individuals more money if you if they don't do that then the premiums for everybody's going to go up um, so it I don't know. It's well, kind of I think this the proposal is to make it uh, work the best for everybody as I was possible. I going to say make the least painful. And and in right. fact, yeah. what they are did propose, and I don't know if you were here for this part of the meeting, was um, actually lower in terms of copays than right. what they had last proposed right. um, because they asked Blue Cross Blue Shield, who's the only program that the trust offers at this point. I know years before they were two or three others. Um, or one or two other uh, insurance programs besides the Blue Cross program. Um, um, so they reduced it, but and, and um, it was going to be so little more in cost, it was worth it sure. for the acceptance by the employee unit. So at any rate, we're, it's I, moving forward, but I, I, we don't, there's a lot of unknowns about it. But I, I've heard this from a couple of people, as well as, uh, I think his name's Mike Sullivan, who's the Town administrator in South Hadley, mm -hmm. and the former mayor of Holyoke, mm -hmm. that he's over the years has done a lot of research to find better health, and says absolutely can't do it. Right. You know, so I think that even though it's a very expensive thing for the community, our employees get good benefits, um, and we pay a, a fair price for that. And I don't know. I think I think overall the trust has been doing well over. The previous administrator and the current one, uh, they've made some good uh, financial mm -hmm. decisions as far as investments go, and I think they've served their uh, clients quite well. Actually, I suggested today to Joe and at the meeting that Michelle include in her newsletter simple things that add to, the, to let people know, encourage them to use Express Scripts, which would save a lot of money. Right. Um, encourage them, uh, you know, as sort of like, Part of the well, wellness we, thinking about how to manage your expenses and take right. 
and get the most out of your health plan. Right. So he was writing notes about that, so hopefully we'll... Well, Bar we had Barbara better. send out, um, you know, the Canadian address for Canadian generic. Yeah. yeah. So that we but can this, say money those, address. That's kind of limited, but, yeah. the, but the mail order is much more expansive and yeah. could, could, you know, but both of those are ways to Cut save costs. on. That's a huge cost. The drug costs are huge. Uh, I, I just can't believe how much they've gone up. Well, you know, that's, they talk about, I don't want to get too political here, but you talk about government, I don't want to use the word interference, but government involvement with um, health care. Since it covers everyone in this country, or everyone in this country needs it, you think the government would step in, and even though I believe in fair, free enterprise and fair trade, what's been happening is people that have some money go in and they'll buy a particular drug company yep. that the drug costs $10. And then they're the only people. They own the patents and all of a sudden, well, now it's going to be $100, you know? And or 5000 Or 5000 I know. And, and that's, that's where I think EpiPens there needs to be disgusting. more rules. And I can't believe I'm saying this because I hate rules. <laughs> but, so much. You know. but now you yes, know why we but have I them. agree <laughs> with you 100%. The government doesn't use its leverage no, on, right, right. on purchasing. No, I, I mean, you could use, they could be a block purchaser and, have, and make the market years ago, more expensive. Years ago, they, they broke I agree. apart uh, Bell Telephone because it was a monopoly. But it really, did, it worked great. And nobody was really making a lot of money. You know, I mean, they oh. were, but not like they are today. Right. And the because, oh. and they look at drug companies as all individual companies, which they are. But when they hold patents, you know, they are a monopoly. Mm -hmm. And when they're the only ones that can produce something, you know, it's, I just don't think. Well, it's the buyouts that have been terrible. Yeah. I mean, you know, yep. on these patents, but whatever. Yep. Um, anyway, I agree with you 100. percent I can't. Did you sign the warrant? Yes. Yes. We did. I'm not sure. If you keep... I did. You did. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. If the um, the next select board board of health meeting is November 1st at 6 p.m. Um, Trevor's away, not. Yeah, I'll Trevor's be... not going to be here, so you and I will okay. do it. Okay. Is you going to Boston? Uh, no, I'm going to go to. Um, to the Cape for the oh. school committee conference. Oh, okay. For a couple of days. Yep. Um, and then we have um, next Tuesday, the 24th, is um, at Frontier. At Frontier, yes. That's at 6 p.m. Yep. Yep. That's going to be interesting. That's still being worked. Um, I met with Lynn the other day, and um, and Wendy had talked to her too. Yeah, and we had had a. It didn't come up I, at the joint school committee meeting, but. I think they're still kind of trying Thank to. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah, this. We're, we're trying to. I think they're still trying to kind of reach out and get a. Yeah. You know, these are not all have to happens, but they were going to group them in like safety and what needs to happen. And I think they're just looking forward to what they need to do to make sure that building doesn't fall into disrepair. So I think some of the stuff, and some of the stuff like, you know, uh, is required. It's more expensive because of the insurances, and the janitors can only do so much. So, if there's other ways that people have ideas in town to kind of reduce the cost, and we could, you know, they're open to listening to all ideas and not, you know, figuring out how we can get it done most, most affordably. And the administrators were talking about other sources of funds, and uh, yeah. Sherry Patch and Sunders saying maybe the anything recreational could be CPA money. Yep. Um, and and energy stuff discussion. should be green communities. Uh, yeah, stuff like I that. I'm not sure what's. We didn't talk about that today, but I we need to follow. Yeah, up so. yeah. So it'll be a good, I think, first discussion on what they need and how we can go forward. Thank so you. It'll it'll work out. Yep. All right. Well, good. then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Sounds wonderful.